Hi, previously I shared some shorts about the Hybrew H10A semi-automatic espresso machine. I've seen your curiosity and questions in the comments, so in this video I'm going to share more details with you. Just to be clear, I didn't buy it myself. It was sent by Hybrew for testing. But rest assured, I've been using it for a few months, and I'm here to give you my honest, unbiased review based on my personal experience with the product. If you find this review helpful at any point, feel free to show some love by hitting that like button. It really helps support the channel. Let's now get into it. Okay, priced around $300, the Hybrew H10A is packed with features that caught my eye. We're talking PID control, pre-infusion, 58mm portafilter, and adjustable temperatures for brewing and steaming. Pretty high-end for a budget machine. These are the kind of perks you'd usually see in pricier models. Hybrew H10A is very compact, about the size of an espresso capsule machine, perfect for anyone with limited counter space. It is built tough, with a stainless steel exterior, and less plastic than many of its competitors. You have stainless steel or matte black to choose from. It's got a generous 1.8 liter water reservoir that's super easy to remove and refill. The control panel is straightforward with only four buttons and the small monitor is super handy for adjusting settings and doubles as a shot timer. There's a pressure gauge right in the middle so you can easily monitor your brew. Moving on to accessories, the Hybrew H10A doesn't skimp here. The 58 mm non-pressurized filter basket is a big plus. Most entry-level machines come with pressurized baskets. They've got this tiny hole at the bottom, and the coffee is forced through, creating what looks like crema, but it's mostly just tiny bubbles. In contrast, non-pressurized baskets allow for a more refined extraction, giving you richer crema and a more complex flavor profile. That's essential for pulling those authentic, barista-style espresso shots we all love. 58mm is usually used in commercial machines. It's easier for puck prep and proper extraction. It fits most coffee accessories out there. Instead, most machines at this price use 51 or 54 mm filter baskets. The solid porta filter is as heavy as the Lelit Bianca's. That's impressive. The tamper is a beautiful piece with a wooden handle, far surpassing the typical plastic tampers. And you also have a milk jug, which is a must have for latte art lovers. All these accessories not only enhance the brewing experience, but also add to the overall value of the machine you have everything you need to start brewing. The Hybrew H10A packs some serious features. It's got pre-infusion, which means your coffee grounds get a nice soak before the full pressure hits. This little trick helps reduce channeling and improves extraction, something you usually see in more expensive machines. You can even adjust the pre-infusion time from zero to 10 seconds if needed. Press the single and double shot buttons simultaneously to adjust the brew temp between 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. Great for playing around with different roasts. It even does cold brew espresso at 25 degrees Celsius. I was skeptical and tried a few shots. Not a big fan, but it was an interesting experience. For milk lovers, the adjustable steam temperature means you can further enhance your milk-based espresso drinks for your taste. Plus, you've got the option to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius and customize your shot volume. And guess what? All these are also available in the Lelit Bianca, which costs 10 times more expensive. And I haven't seen other products at this price offer this level of customization. Let's put the Hybrew H10A to the test. Turn the machine on. It takes about 10 seconds to warm up. To really showcase the shot quality, I'm using a bottomless porta filter, which you can buy one from Hybrew's official site. Remember, it uses non-pressurized baskets, meaning it's quite picky for grind size. You will need an espresso grinder that allows you to dial in. Here I used Hybrew's G5 grinder, which is also a budget-friendly stepless espresso grinder. If you're new to espresso brewing or using pre-ground coffee, you might find it a bit tricky. Here's the workflow. Start with 17 grams of beans, aim for an espresso grind, pull a test shot, and try to hit 34 grams of liquid in about 25 seconds. If it's too slow, go for a coarser grind. If too fast, make it finer. Here are some tips. I use a WDT tool to break up clumps and a distribution tool for an even coffee bed before tamping. This really helps in reducing channeling. Also, a calibrated tamper like this can make your puck prep much easier. With pre-infusion, the machine first wets the grounds gently before ramping up the pressure. Keep an eye on the pressure gauge. You want to see the needle in the green zone. The espresso flows into the cup with rich crema.
It's just a great shot that I won't expect in a machine at this price point. And when it comes to testing different brew temperatures, this machine is spot on. It won't produce a lukewarm espresso like many affordable machines do. Now, on to the milk. The H10A uses a professional one-hole steam wand, not the usual Panarello wand you find in entry-level machines. This wand is able to create that silky microfoam for latte art. The steam pressure is just right for getting that essential vortex in the milk. Start with the tip just at the surface to inject air. The hissing noise is loud, but it's normal. Then dive deeper to keep the vortex going until the milk jug is too hot to touch. Sure, steaming milk takes a bit of practice. And there's this cool feature, auto temp surfing. Unlike those fancy heat exchanger or dual boiler machines, most home espresso machines can't brew and steam at the same time. After steaming, the water is too hot for brewing. Many single boiler machines require manual temperature surfing, but with the H10A, it automatically cools down to your set brew temperature. No more guesswork. After brewing with the high brew for a few months, I've noticed something for improvement. First, the drip tray. It's small and not too deep, so it fills up quick, so I need to clean after every two or three shots. And watch out for splashes on the countertop when you're purging the group head. Another thing, there's no three-way solenoid valve. So, a quick tip here. Don't remove the portafilter right after a shot. Give it a moment to drip and release any leftover pressure, or you'll have a bit of a mess with the grounds in the group head. These are just minor issues when you consider the overall value of this machine. If you're an espresso enthusiast on a budget, the Highbrew H10A is a fantastic choice. That's it for our review of the Highbrew H10A. Hopefully this video has answered all your questions about this machine. Got more questions? Just drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any of our future coffee-related videos.